Hey guys, there's a Twitter war between Boris Becker and Nick Kyrgios, and I want to report on it because it deals with a very important topic, which is the tennis serve. I spent a tremendous amount of time analyzing the serve, and it is my favorite stroke in tennis to analyze. Now, some of the things that Nick Kyrgios is claiming, I strongly disagree with. So let me first tell you what Nick Kyrgios said. The game was so slow back then. I watched Boris Becker and I'm not saying that they weren't good in their time, but to say that they would be just as good now, it's absurd. A big serve back then was like 197 to 200 kilometers an hour. People like me, we serve 220 consistently. Two corners, it's a whole different ball game. I'm not saying they wouldn't have found their way, but serve and volley to do it all the time now, you need to be serving 220 because if you serve anything less than 220, bro, Djokovic eats you alive. He eats you alive, bro. Leighton Hewitt destroyed Pete Sampras one year at the US Open. That was the first prototype of someone who could return serve. He made Sampras look like S. And what would Djokovic do to someone like Sampras? It would be a cleanup. If Hewitt was doing it, Djokovic would destroy him. He would eat him alive. So let me comment on what Nick Kyrgios said here. And there's a lot of falsehoods and I'm shocked that these falsehoods are coming from a great player such as Kyrgios. So first of all, to say that serves back in the day of Becker and Sampras weren't as fast as today's serve is ludicrous. The serve has not increased in speed or quality in the last Boris Becker's fastest serve was 141 miles an hour and Pete Sampras could easily serve over 130 miles an hour. Now mind you that the equipment that these guys were using back in the day wasn't as high quality of the equipment that players use nowadays. But despite that fact, players were serving at the same speed that the players serve today. Now when it comes to serve quality, it's not all about speed. And I highly recommend that you watch my video on the best servers in the history of tennis. And there's a reason why I stacked my top five with players from the past, because in my opinion, players used to serve better back in the day. And this is exactly the same thing that Boris Becker said. In the serve and volley era, serves were structured differently. Differently. They had to be more precise and there was a lot more variety on the serve. And one important factor is also the second serve. And in my opinion, Pete Sampras had the greatest second serve of all time. So when we're talking about serves, it's not all about speed. You have to look at the entire picture, including the hold game. Now think about it this way. The whole reason why the ATP Tour changed the balls and the surfaces was the quality of the serves. Remember the Ivanishevich Sampras Wimbledon finals with no rallies whatsoever? That is the primary reason why tennis was changed and slowed down so that we can get more rallies. Now, when Kyrgios says that you need to serve 220 to serve in Bali, that is absolutely not true. If you remember the US Open final, between Djokovic and Medvedev. Djokovic was serving slice serves at 115 miles an hour and he was doing a phenomenal job serving and volleying. If you watch the Madrid final between Struff and Alcaraz, Struff was serving kick serves, serve and volleying, and he had great success doing so. So no, you don't need to serve 220 in order to serve and volley. Could you serve and volley on every first and second serve in today's powerful game? Probably not, but this more has to do with the surfaces than anything else. Of course, you would have a horrible time serving volleying, just like players had a terrible time doing so on clay back in the day. If you serve and volleyed on every first and second serve, playing with slow balls on a slow hard court, you're gonna have a hard time against players like Nadal, Djokovic, Alcaraz, Sinner, and so on. Now to say the game was so slow back then is completely misleading. And I want everybody to look up the ATP World Finals from back in the day when it was played in Germany between Sampras and Becker. And then I want you to take a look at a rally from this year's Paris Rolex Masters between Medvedev and Dimitrov where they went back and forth at least 50 times. And you tell me what game was faster, Becker Sampras or Medvedev versus Dimitrov. Watch those matches between Becker and Sampras. You're gonna see 130 mile an hour serves. You're gonna see blistering return winners. The game was unbelievably fast back in the day. Now, I'm by no means saying that the game is slow today, but it is definitely easier to play from the baseline because of the slow surfaces and the slow balls. Now, having said that, there are players who play with phenomenal speeds such as Sinner and Alcaraz. And yes, of course, someone like Sinner and Alcaraz would have great chances to beat a player like Sampras 
or Becker. But I will make the caveat and say that if we play it on a fast surface, on fast grass, fast hard court, and you take someone like Sampras or Becker and put them even against Djokovic, I think those guys would have a chance. I do believe that Djokovic would probably figure out a way to beat them because he's the GOAT. But those guys definitely would be very difficult to break because they were masters at holding serve. But not only that, they also had phenomenal return games where they would play incredibly aggressive and they would get their looks at least once per set to get that important break of serve. Now, to go on with the story, Boris Becker actually replied to Nick Kyrgios and he said, Nick makes a lot of noise about tennis lately. Why does he speak about a sport he apparently hates? Fact check, Nick has never won a major championship as a player or coach. Yes, doubles won. So where is any credibility coming from? Trying to compare generations, Labor versus Federer, Borg versus Nadal, Sampras versus Djokovic. I'm not even going to mention McEnroe, Connors, Lendl, Agassi, Courier, Edberg, Wielander, Curtin, Bruguera, Rafter, Hewitt, and many more. Speak to your about many things but tennis. Now Nick Kyrgios is very quick and witty on Twitter and he makes good responses that are sometimes funny and he responded to this with also I mean I've beaten Federer, Nadal, Djokovic, Murray so I feel like I have a little credibility but it doesn't take a rocket scientist to see that Novak would wipe the floor against you in your prime. Like it's not an attack it's just facts. Now in a separate tweet Becker wrote I wish Nick a speedy full recovery and I can't wait to see him back on a tennis court. Court. He's an exciting player when he's fit. He's got a grand slam in his bag, but you have to do the talking on the court. Good luck, Nick Kyrgios. Now Kyrgios responded again by calling Boris Becker a potato head and he got into several altercations with people that were disagreeing with him in the comments. And we're just going to leave it at that. But I do want to stress one important thing about the serve. There are great servers on the tour right now. Someone like Hurkacz. Sinner, Medvedev, Kyrgios, they have phenomenal serves. But in my opinion, the greatest servers of all time play tennis in the 90s. And why am I saying that? Because I'm judging it on statistics and I'm also judging it on technique. And when you look at a serve like Sampras or Becker and you compare it to a serve like Kyrgios, who is one of the greatest servers in the world. When I conduct my technical analysis, Becker's serve and Sampras' serves are superior to Kyrgios' serve. They have a more aggressive and more powerful loading positions. There are other technical elements that Sampras and Becker do better than Kyrgios does. And it's an important lesson because despite the fact that Becker and Sampras played with equipment that was outdated, they were able to serve just as fast as the players today. But it's not all about speed. They were also able to serve more consistently, more accurately, and they had better second serves. And why were they able to do so? Well, first of all, they were phenomenal athletes that put a tremendous amount of repetitions in. And most importantly, they serve with absolutely perfect technique that encompasses all the fundamental elements of the tennis serves that I'm teaching to you guys.